Hello my audio file friends and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm pretty excited and the reason for that is I just purchased my first pair of ELAC speakers. These are the uh, ELAC debut reference DBR62s. They have a six and a half inch driver and a one inch soft dome tweeter. I've always been curious on how ELAC speakers sound as well as their build quality and today we're going to find out how well made these speakers are. So I'm going to do a complete teardown on this speaker. We're going to go over the TS parameters of the drivers. We're going to look at the crossover components. And then we're going to take a look at the cabinet construction. So if any of those types of things interest you, stay tuned. So I'm really kind of excited to tear one of these down. I've never owned a pair of ELAC speakers, but I've heard a lot of good things about them. And I actually did reach out to ELAC to see if they would send me a pair to review, but they never responded. I guess my channel's too small to matter, but that's not a big deal. I just went ahead and bought my own set anyways. And today we're gonna find out just what makes these things tick. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the base driver. Base driver is held in by these four three millimeter Allen screws. It appears I need to remove the grill to the tweeter before I can remove the base driver. I was able to remove the grill to the tweeter with just my fingers. Oh wow, I'm liking what I'm seeing already. The base driver out of the DBR62 is extremely nice considering the $700 price point that these speakers sell at. The driver features a butyl rubber surround and the co material is made from Aramid fiber. If you're familiar with Kevlar, then Aramid is basically the same thing as both fibers share the same polymer structure. Aramid fibers are used in advanced products where lightweight and high strength are needed. Using Aramid as a co material can reduce the cone's body weight while retaining high strength. And they also have good damping properties too. In my opinion, Aramid is a premium material and isn't cheap, so I was surprised to see it in a pair of bookshelf speakers that are this affordable. And the premium materials didn't stop there either. ELEC is using a cast speaker basket instead of the typical stamp steel variety that I see in this price category. Cast baskets offer better damping and are substantially stronger than stamp steel baskets. Even a pair of $799 KEF Q350s use a stamp steel basket as the foundation for their UniQ drivers. With ELAC, it appears you get quite a bit of value for your hard earned dollar. The base driver in the DBR62 is using an underhung voice coil design and ELAC is using several design techniques to keep it cool. The first method is by using a vented pole piece which indirectly cools the voice coil and also gives the trapped air behind the dust cap a place to vent. The second method is by venting the voice coil underneath the spider which will help keep it cool during those long and loud listening sessions. Another thing that surprised me is the large ferrite magnet that they are using. I can now see why the bass response is so good with the DBR62s. I don't think I've come across another 6.5 inch driver using a magnet that is quite this large in this price category. This is definitely one of the more hefty 6.5 inch drivers that I've come across. Speaking of which, let's see how much this driver weighs. And the bass driver came in at 4 pounds and 15 ounces. Pretty hefty. For comparison, the base driver for my SVS Ultra Evolution bookshelf weighs 3 pounds and 10 ounces, and the base driver for my Bowers & Wilkins 705 S2s came in at 3 pounds and 13.5 ounces. Now let's throw this driver on the bench and measure its TS parameters. I am very impressed by these measurements considering that these speakers sell for only $700 per pair. The resonant frequency came in at 46.9 Hz, and the bass driver in the DBR62 is extremely well damped. Total Q came in at 0.31. That's impressive for this price category. 
Voice coil inductance is pretty decent too and came in at 0.53 millihenries. I can now see why the DBR62 has such great bass. It's because BL came in at almost 8.5 tesla meters. BL is a measurement of motor strength and I think the DBR62 has one of the strongest that I have tested in this price category so far. Now let's test for any variations between the bass drivers. I tested a pair of JBL Studio 630s a few months ago and had terrible consistency between them. And I'm hoping ELAC can do much better. The green and blue lines are Woofer 1 and Woofer 2 for my JBL Studio 630s. As you can see from the chart, there was enough of a discrepancy between both drivers that it failed this test. For the JBL drivers, FS had a difference of almost 13%. And there is a 46% difference in max impedance. Yikes. If you're interested in a pair of ELAC DBR62 speakers, then you can breathe easily because the tolerances are much, much tighter between drivers. The discrepancy in FS and max impedance for the DBR62 came in at 1.2% and 3.6%. That is really good. Now let's remove the tweeter. It's held in by four 3mm Allen screws. And they are very tight. The DBR62 uses a 1 inch soft dome tweeter that utilizes a dome made from cloth. The interesting part about this tweeter is that it uses a wide surround and reminds me of the surrounds that you would typically see on a woofer. Andrew Jones, who is the chief engineer at ELAC, said the wide surround gives the tweeter the ability to go down really low as well as the ability to go really high. To ensure the tweeter would have a nice flat response all the way to 20,000 Hz, Andrew developed the tweeter to extend well beyond human hearing to near 35,000 Hz. His reasoning behind this is that some soft dome tweeters start to roll off near 20,000 and can be down as much as 3 dB or more. Developing a tweeter that has a frequency response well beyond 20K should ensure a flat response to 20,000 Hz. Andrew goes into more detail than I ever could share, so I will include a link to his video in the description. Another performance enhancing mechanism is the waveguide that this tweeter uses. This waveguide is designed to improve directivity, which will in turn give a strong soundstage and maintain even tonality. Here are the results of the impedance sweep that I performed on the tweeter. The resonant frequency of the tweeter came in at 823 Hz, which is no surprise there. For the most part, the impedance curve is pretty smooth up until about 1600 Hz. At 1600 Hz, there is a hump right after the resonant frequency, which I think is caused by driver resonances that are taking place. This resonance won't matter anyways because the tweeter is crossed over at 2200 Hz and will never play down that low. The cabinet for the DBR62 is very well made and is one of the best that I have seen at this price point. The front baffle is 7 8 of an inch thick and the rear cabinet wall is 5 8 of an inch thick. I would assume the side cabinet walls are the same thickness as the rear cabinet wall but can't verify. In the center of the cabinet is a pretty hefty brace that ties the side walls together and will help reduce any resonances that might be taking place. ELAC even lined parts of the cabinet wall with damping material, which is nice to see. I really like the way this cabinet looks. The rounded edges and the blacked out front baffle give the cabinet a nice high end look. Even the fake wood grain is nice enough where I think it might fool some people into thinking it's real wood veneer. Now let's see how this cabinet sounds when I perform the good old fashioned knock test. Not bad, this is very solid cabinet construction for this price point. Now let's measure port tuning. Do you see the two humps on the graph? The lowest point between those two humps is the port tuning for the DBR62, which came in around 50 Hz. This test can also detect any cabinet resonances that might be taking place. The hump that I circled in yellow shows a small cabinet resonance around 600 Hz. The terminal cup for the DBR62 is held in by four Phillips head screws. 
The terminal cup and crossover are integrated with each other, meaning the crossover is mounted directly behind the back side of the terminal cup. Getting the terminal cup out was a bit challenging because the crossover is fairly large and there isn't a whole lot of room to pull it out of the opening. Now let's test the binding post and crossover for any ferromagnetic materials in the signal path. The binding posts are not ferromagnetic, but the nuts that are used to fasten them to the terminal cup are ferromagnetic. The tabs that connect the crossover to the binding post are not ferromagnetic either, which is nice to see. If you don't mind spending a few bucks on brass nuts, then you can easily replace the ferromagnetic nuts on the binding post with ones made from brass. I will leave links in the description to the brass nuts that I'll be using on my speakers. The crossover for the DBR62 is pretty nice for this price point. The woofer circuit contains several nice gauge air core inductors and the tweeter circuit is using a metallized polyester film capacitor. The crossover contains more parts on it than I typically see from speakers in this price category. It appears ELAC took the time to design a pretty nice crossover for the DBR62. Every once in a while I come across a set of speakers that really impress me and the ELAC debut reference DBR62 is definitely one of those speakers. There are three fundamental categories that make up a great speaker. The drivers, crossover, and cabinet. And the ELAC debut reference DBR62 checks all three of these categories. And the best part is, they are only $700 per pair. I especially like the high quality drivers that they are using in these speakers. Drivers of this quality are normally found in speakers costing quite a bit more. Even the cabinet and crossover are pretty impressive for this price point. If you're in the market for a true audiophile grade speaker without breaking the bank, then the ELAC debut reference is definitely a speaker you'll want to have a listen to. In my next video, I'll be doing a review on the DBR62. In my review videos, I test out the speakers in a variety of different room sizes to see how they perform. And then I give you my listening impressions on how they sound in both movies and music. And that's my look inside video on the ELAC Debut Reference DBR62 speakers. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. So long, and happy listening.